What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Golden Dice Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. With me, as always, I have Brian and Tyler. Uh, that's the mood that he's in today. He's a Tyler type of... The whole key, boy. <laughs> uh, but we are on episode 16 of our podcast, and this week what we're going to be doing is tier lists. Everybody loves a tier list. I don't know anybody... I like, feel like every time anybody looks at a tier list, they're like, yes, that's what I've been waiting for. Except Reddit. Reddit, Reddit loves Brian, everything. dude. Reddit loves Brian. I couldn't think Zero of a Zero upvotes and 20 comments saying how I am wrong. And it was funny because it was over Thrawn. And I love the one guy's comment was like, if you play any, not to like piggyback or like just dunk on a guy that's not here, but it was condescending. And it was so really funny. Whereas anybody I've talked to who's played Swoo consistently, I don't think anybody's like, yo, Thrawn is... He's it, bro. <laughs> I think people see potential, but it's like, all right, he's not currently there. Just play Boba. <laughs> yeah, that's and that's basically the point of my. I, I wrote that at the end of that end of that part of the article. I was like, just play Boba. It's better, you know. Anyway, yeah. I digress. I'm not salty. Well, you're a little salty. A little salty. That's okay though. Um, all right, so we're gonna do tier lists. All three of us created separate ones, uh, and so I mean, I have the advantage of. I got a sneak peek, but I didn't really try to process it because I want to process it real time with the other ones. But we're going to go through and we're going to talk about our tier lists. Uh, and then even at the end and in the comments, would love to hear who's uh, you feel like is the most accurate. I Not like Tyler gave you a lot of time to process ahead of time That's anyway. True. A classic flocked and move does it five minutes before the podcast. And when... I'm literally sorry. I have a job. Bro, you've oh, known about okay, this for like oh, okay. three days. We've talked about this. Yes. Point. I, I, I just finished my time card. I had almost 100 hours in two weeks, so I don't want to hear it. Wow. Wow. Don't want to hear it. That's crazy. Wow. And I get paid wow. for 80. That's crazy, dude. Anyway. It's such a time commitment to make a tier list. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Anyway. So we're going to start off with mine, then we're going to do Brian's, and then because we want everybody to stick around, we're going to do the most anticipated one last. We're going to do Flocks last. Uh, but, yeah. So each of us can probably – and as everybody makes tier lists, I'm sure everybody has different qualifications of what S, A, B, C, and D. That's what our tiers were. So some of it for us, I think we kind of said like best deck of that character um, is what we were kind of going for. But if you did, if Brian and Fogg, if you did kind of rank somebody higher because you're like, oh, they do have three decks that are actually pretty decent type thing. Like, that's fine. Just explain it. Um, but yeah, we are mostly going with the best deck with that character uh, for our tier lists. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going with. And so jumping in, we're going to do mine first. Um, I have to hit send in discord. So you guys see it, right? Yep. Boom. Uh, so starting off with a surprise to all is Boba Fett. I've got Boba Fett in S tier. Um, he also fits both categories of, I think like Boba Fett green, uh, banana, <laughs> banana and I were just having the debate in our discord, uh, of what Boba Fett is his, or is the best right now. I said green, he likes red a lot, um, but I think both those decks are solid. I also think Cunning's really good, uh, like a mono deck with him is really good as well. So you have a lot of choices. I haven't played blue to comment on it. I know uh, Garbage Rollers just did a deck tech on that, so if you're interested in trying that, you can uh, definitely do that. Not saying it's bad by any means, I've just never played it. Um, and then going from there, you've got Leia keeping her in mind with Aggression as an aggro deck. I, I do think she's better and more consistent uh, than Sabine, but I think they're both really good. Um, and what they want to do. And so I've got her slightly ahead of Sabine. Sabine, I think, offers some consistency of the pinging action. And we even tested, <laughs> I tested a, a blue version with Sabine, which I thought was really interesting, uh, but I played pretty much zero blue cards. But the security complex shield was was pretty nice. It did make you eat two attacks and two benthic two tubes or something like that. Because that's how I shielded. Um, but yeah. She's obviously really good with Cunning, has some other options. I don't think Mono is going to be really that great. Blue's interesting. I, I do like what I've done so far. And then Green is kind of like weird. I don't know if Green gives enough Rebel Bodies for like me to care. The Echo Base and the Battlefield Marine are nice, but outside of that, I don't know. Bright Hope is obviously really good too. But uh, outside those three, I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, so that's my, my S tier. Do you guys have any immediate reactions to this? Do we want to go by reactions through the tier? Or should I just read through it all and then... Go from there. Nothing. Nothing jumps out to me. Mine is pretty similar. 
Uh, I think I put Sabine in a different place for a different reason. Um, but, I mean, it makes sense. Boba has been the star of the show consistently. Uh, and Leia, with the support that she's gotten, has, has really come up. And uh, it makes sense for, that she's where she's at. Uh, and Sabine, I'll talk about when it's my turn. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much cool with I'm pretty much cool with this. Um, I definitely agree with Boba, for sure, S-tier. Um, Leia Sabine, yep, I'm fine. I'm just curious to see, because I know we haven't done a lot of, like, um, mirror matches or anything, so I'm curious to see how it goes if we were to do these three S-tier uh, decks, like, kind of just constantly going to get and see where which one falls where. Um, especially, like, mirror matches, because we know when we go to tournaments... If there's the best deck, the S tier decks, they're going to be a lot of them, and they're going to be going against each other a lot. So, curious to see which one does better in mirror matches, or even best one against each other. So, interesting to see what that is when we get more gameplay. But yeah, yep, I agree with these. I've heard the common the common thing about Sabine is you know everyone's sideboarding to counter her. So I mean it makes sense that she's that high. Yep. You know. Yeah. I, I mean I do think Boba naturally counters aggro anyways. Uh, especially the green version, and then like like I said, you can cyborg in like the that three drop, three three ship that restores two if you have the battlefield, and like being able to ECL that and kill a a wing or a red three is really good, really really good. So um, he's definitely just got a lot of options on top on top of the bounce and exhaust and just overwhelming barrage and the green cards and ramp and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. That's my S tier. Going into A tier, uh, consistently impressed by Luke. I think green and red of him are both very good options. I'm a little bit biased in that I think I enjoy green more, but I feel like red has a little bit of a better like mid game, whereas green has a better like top end. Right? I think home one is better than like Mace Windu type situation. Um, Krennic is good. Blue villain's been getting a lot of support, a lot of good removal, um, and I think him being a solid body at f five that restores too, um, and also makes trades really weird with damage and stuff already on them. Uh, I think he's really good. And then close behind him is Darth Vader, specifically thinking green. Um, I know there's some other options I've seen. Like I think blue is probably the next option with Vader that's played the most in a similar shell of what Krennic aggression is. But uh, I feel like Krennic just kind of fits that mold a little bit better for the plus damage and just coming out two rounds earlier. But yeah, that's my take on A tier. Yeah, pretty pretty normal to me. I mean, uh, I'm just curious about um, which we'll call it, how uh, Renick's gonna be. I still feel like personally, I don't, I don't think we have enough games in our gameplay to see Krennic going higher up. But I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like Vader and Luke stomp Krennic. That's my only take. Yeah, we. Um... We've been maximizing yeah, think... like games played of yeah. across different decks, whereas we really haven't sat down. And because like, yeah, test results of certain like archetypes is fine, but test results of like certain like specific matchups is less relevant. Mm -hmm. I feel like until you get like a full like you want to know how Boba does an aggro, yeah. but like right now, I mean, you could argue that Lei and Sabine are pretty much done in what they are. But yeah, I don't know. I think Credit is is pretty good. Vader, I feel like has disappointed me a little lately. I'm liking Vader. I don't know. I, I uh, still... I, I like Vader. I'm having fun with Vader. I think he could be very good. Yeah, I mean, you said, I, I think, still have him in A tier. Definitely yeah, think he's I know. Yeah, I know. But, but I, I feel like it... Yeah, I don't know. With green, with Vader, with OB, I think it's just... I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that... uh, I think that Vader has some room to grow even more than he is now. Actually, um, maybe not this set, uh, you know, but in, in future sets for sure. I, I just think he's just a good, he's just solid all around. Like, I think there are some colors that you don't want with him, like yellow for sure. I built a blue Vader today that doesn't really feel optimized to the most, but like, I don't know. I, I think he's got some potential. I like him in A tier. I put him in A tier above... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Well, you'll see. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, I think that <laughs> Flock, your your opinion of Krennic is uh, partly my fault because I've mostly run him in mono, in mono. which is <laughs> the <laughs> most disappointing, the most the most difficult to pull off. Um, and I think that he, 
uh, I really like a leader that doesn't really take additional time to be advantageous, right? So, like, Krennic's base ability is not a stop and do this. It is a flat out across the board all the time, if you remember, <laughs> to do it, you know? Yeah. Which a lot of time, I've seen I've seen some people, myself included, go, yeah, I'll do this, and then completely, uh, you know, forget that he has an ability. But uh, I think the Krennic has... has really impressed me uh, and i have gone a complete 180 on my original opinion of him because i was like meh he's fine like whatever but he he's actually a standout to me particularly so i'm interested to see where he goes in the future especially in the early uh early stages of of, of op yeah you know he at krennic yeah i feel like he has some flexibility of red and green i feel like vader's locked into green because he's such like a beast of a leader that you want to ramp with him. Mm -hmm. Like, why wouldn't you want to play resupply and or super laser tech to get this? What's he a five, eight? Yeah. Five, eight out that deals two damage on attack. Like he's just a beast. Demon. Just the issue then Demon. becomes is like, people are pretty much holding stuff to how do I lose this game? Their Vader gets out of control. So I'm going to have a car. Like, I'm going to make sure I can ECL fleet lieutenant or something, you know, like I was, I was doing for you guys this week, like having some type of removal for him is the second he comes and hits the board. But yeah. Yeah. And then it feels bad when he's gone. Yeah. You know, like, the deck completely crumbles because he comes out so late. I mean, there are definite drawbacks to playing Vader. I totally agree, but I, I you know... I like, th I like this. Yeah. A tier is good. Yeah. Uh, Alright, going on to B tier, I've got the new, newly spoiled Chirrut. Uh, I'm pretty high on him right now. Can see where that goes and where that fluctuates. Uh, as time goes on, but currently a fan of him. And then I've got Han, who I think is a really good leader, just kind of gets shut down for similar reasons, like I mentioned, of Vader, but also, like, more so than Vader. Like, if you do no good to me dead on Vader, you're probably still scared for when he comes out, whereas if you do no good to me dead Han, you've pushed back his big round, and now he's just playing on curve like everybody else type thing. And it's, like, ruining his game plan. Um but he's got some interesting stuff with green, has some big bombs, has that uh, frontline shuttle to make another attack out of him if he does get exhausted. So there's some interesting things. I think he's a really good leader. Just it's tough when arguably the best leader is a uh, yellow villain. Uh, a little bit of a spicy take is that I've got Grand Inquisitor in the middle of my B tier. Um, I think he's actually had some really good race potential, really good like combo -y and even aggro uh, potential within that. Um, I've liked him in blue. I've been meaning to try him in yellow from uh, Banana Crab Shoot's list, from Saga's list. Uh, just haven't had the opportunity. Um, he can actually be pretty scary, even as a 3-6, because of what else he might be resetting uh, on the board. Multiple resets of Fifth Brother is um, a scary time to be alive. <laughs> um, and then Cassian, don't think he's necessarily bad. I've really grown to love. I mean, you guys have probably played my green Cassian more than anybody else has played green Cassian <laughs> in the entire swoop community. Um, so I've been loving him and enjoying him. I don't think he's necessarily terrible. He's just feels like red green's a pretty decent color combo for rebels. And he's just happens to be more mid rangey than Sabine. So since I want to go late, I'm, I'm, I'm playing him type thing. Uh, and then Tarkin, I feel like it's fallen off a lot. I still don't really, love the red deck anymore i do want to give the mono command a try once we get that third command card but also you know if palp's coming i could just want to play mono palp in green and not really touch tarkin anymore and then Jin, like i still think she's good and i definitely could see her like moving up especially past grand inquisitor but i don't know none of us have had any decks where we were like yo Jin kind of cranks here it's more so just like yeah like this is fine i get some good value trades but i feel like she's not unlocked yeah, and part of that is probably on us not really, like, pushing it because she's not as exciting. Like, yellow, Han is just a little bit more fun, you know? But, um, yeah. That's my B tier. Yeah, I sat down and tried to make a gin deck today, and I was like, nope. <laughs> Don't care. Don't want to. Feels like a waste of time to me right now, so. Uh, I mean, my, my, my B tier looks pretty similar. Um, I think the positioning of a few are different but um makes sense i like i i think Jin and cassian are just fine uh yeah looks good to me uh either me 
Mine's completely different, but you know. <laughs> good. Should have say that. Well, Mine's completely different for that one. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, and then rounding out my C tier um, is Chewbacca, Thrawn, Hera, Iden. Um, I don't necessarily like think like Hera is like that bad. She definitely has some game into some of these leaders, but she's just handicapped by how good the Spectre cards are. So if they're broken, she could be broken. If they're pretty mid, then she's going to be pretty mid type thing. Um, like, like imagine if Attack Pattern Delta was like an actually good card, <laughs> you know, and being able to run that in command in the deck would be really cool. Um, Thrawn is so low simply because just that that saying we keep saying, and just run Boba. Uh, he has a lot of upside. I think we just need to see more cards that like interact with exhausted characters, right? When there's, you know, like open fires pay three to deal four, but imagine if there was a yellow card, yellow villain card that was pay two to deal four to an exhausted character type thing. So it's like exhausted. It rewards your interactions with paying to exhaust units and stuff like that is, um, and, and even to balance that, right. You could be like, well, Jack, everybody exhausts. So that's kind of OP. It could be a character. You like deal four to a character. You exhausted this turn or something like that, you know? So that, that would work into yellow villain and he could go up. Uh, and Chewbacca, <clears throat> like sometimes I'm like, man, this is like, this is working pretty good. Chewie's actually not terrible. And then you just play games and you just get dumpster and you're like, all right, delete this deck. But Brian busted out aggression Chewie and I was very impressed. Not very. I don't say very impressed, but I'm down. There, there's I'm some down. interesting and there's even some tweaks, I think, looking at that list again that I would make. I think there's some other like three drops we could include. And yeah, that, like the patrol craft actually, I think, could come out of that deck because you could add in Sentinels, everything. I mean, it's Chewie. Yeah. yeah. So if you go down to a three drop with like the Starwing Scout. Like that's it's a pretty big hit, and if you have the initiative, then they're forced to kill it to draw. Yeah. Stuff. So, uh, but he he's interested me in there, um, and I definitely think he could have have some game. And then Iden is just I don't know, like at six a four four just feels so bad, even though it's shielded. Uh, I think she we'll have to see, I guess, what the rest of the blue events are because she's been touted as like the best control, I believe, by the devs even. So I mean, we'll have to to see how she shapes out. But currently, as of January 2024, do not feel like she's that good. Uh, and then rounded out, obviously, with IG88 in the bottom tier. I almost wanted to rename it just IG88 tier. <laughs> thousand percent I agree renamed. with that decision, but, you know. <laughs> I renamed my tier. Thousand percent. Uh, yeah. All right, any, I mean, any other big things? I think I got yours queued up, Brian, so yours looks similar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, mine is, oh, mine is a lot gosh. of this game. So I think that, like, even, <laughs> even before I... Well, no, I mean, just going into this, I, I think that uh, I should just put mine up, and then I can go from there and cool. kind of explain my differences, because we're so yeah. Fuck, any, any thoughts on, on this before I throw it up and let Brian go loose? Y'all are all wrong. Continue. Okay. All all right. Right. I'm going to okay. go ahead and throw Brian's up on the screen. Okay, so uh, mine, again, looks pretty similar, although I have the, the hot take that Sabine is behind... In A tier, and I don't necessarily think that she's bad. I think that she has the same issue as Han, though, uh, where like a no good to be dead. Uh, mostly yellow decks can kind of cripple her pretty easily. Uh, so I mean, in a in a similar vein to like just run Boba, I mean, I, I think you could just run Leia, Leia Red. I mean, that's kind of the same or better better situation. Um, I think that's a that's a hot take for me, but also because I have really never run her, I've only played against her. Uh, I mean, she's pretty good, right? That's why she's up at A. Um, I've been smacked plenty of times by her, but uh, I think that she'll fall off a little bit more in favor of Leia as the set one meta goes on. Um, Luke and Vader in A tier. I have a little more faith in 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 Vader than you do. Uh, but I do, I, I can, I, I could agree that Vader and Krennic are m more or less interchangeable. Um, I think that Tarkin is a little, uh, less explored by us as well. I think that we would need more information on, on Tarkin's better combinations because we haven't really touched him too much. Uh, uh, every time I build a deck that isn't either red or green with him. Like, I look at yellow, and I'm just like, what am I mm, doing in here? Yeah. I don't want to play an ISB agent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think that he, with the last 40, could be something. I don't know. Maybe as, as 
maybe as they drop Palpatine, something else comes out that could go along with either Palp or Tarkin in that sense. Um, so, I mean, I think he has a little bit more room to grow as well. That's why I put him uh, closer up to his top of B. Uh, Chirrut, I, I agree with you in the sense that, like, every time I've seen him, he seems, he seems solid. Um, there are a lot of lines that we probably haven't explored too much yet, just because he's new. Um, but the combos that I've seen people pull off with him, as far as Carabast and Ibat and, you know, Got that new Resilient. Card. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, and Bendu. Um, Not that. Pro uh, oh. The Force, what was the one called today? The Force Oh, the Force is with me. The Force is with we. Um, <laughs> when I knew it. Chirrut, I'm we. Yeah, I think that he, and Protector, I mean, I haven't really seen people use Protector just yet, or, it's Protector, right? Uh, with the, uh, the, the Sentinel. The uh, no, Sentinel? The Sen Sentinel one that, that has Chirrut on, on the card. I'm looking real quick. Protector, Protector. gives yeah. Sentinel, yeah. Yep. The one yeah. drop. I mean, there, there are you're... some things that that could do, too, or, you know. Uh, Han, same issue. Cassian and Jin are kind of middle of the road like i said they kind of disappointed me um jen i don't really know like how best to build her um i i mean i've seen i've seen jack cassie and deck do work so I, I i i have faith there that that could be something you know down the road too grand inquisitor i think has come a long way um but still i think you need to be pretty confident about your lines and you know anticipating what is coming to make him him good and, and you successful with that deck c tier i think mine is exactly the same as as, as yours jack or is no, hera and thrawn, hera and thrawn uh so hera i think like you said i mean hera is just the gimmick deck right i mean i think that uh she could be like you said she could be good if the specter cards are good i do i do like being able to run command uh and and, and play the command card because i feel like most other decks i don't really want to go mono with a ton of them. I, I've tried mono Krennic, and that, that just is enough to, you know... Well, that has to be, especially the timing of when you play it. Is, it is the worst. Blue yeah, one had to be, like, the worst mono color. I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to, you know, whatever. However, hmm. uh, I think Hera is, is enjoyable to play now that she has more toys to use. Uh, Chewbacca has has interested me a lot more recently. Like I made the red deck, like you said, I think it could, I think it could go somewhere. That was a very rough first draft, but uh, it seemed good. To to be fair, I I don't know about the sp specific game that I was playing it this week. Uh, the circumstances were not uh, particularly in Flock's favor, so um, you know. Uh, I, I, play play yeah. I, I I wasn't really sure how to play the deck, and I had so, a few plays and played it wrong. The testing results are uh, not as reliable as I'd, I'd want them to be there. But um, yeah, but you could say that about flocks that or decks that flock plays all the time too. Good, I do, <laughs> and I will. Um, Thrawn, like I said, ha just has kind of fallen flat a little bit for me. I wanted him to be uh, the menace that he was in Rebels, and and uh, with the stat line and the ability and hand knowledge, like you'd think he'd be a good leader, but like he just kind of dirtles a lot. His pacing is weird. You pay for his ability. Like, he puts you off curve. Everything about him points to maybe next set. Right? Maybe the setup to that. Um, because, again, he's got some good things going for him. Um, maybe maybe I'm not using the right color pairing. No, he's bad. But, um, I, I mean, even the cars that he came with, like Chimera. Yeah, Chimera's terrible. Terrible. So, and then Aiden has just really, really not been great. Uh, I don't think that anyone is particularly clamoring about Aiden at all, except for Flock. I mean, yeah, I, I like I like her, but bad. bad. <laughs> you, I, I like her, too. She's not good. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the difference. Um, and I, I think that, like, her, Jack and I were talking about this earlier today. I think her stat line's weird, right? I think that her uh, having a 4-4... Four, four, and coming out on six, it it just it it feels terrible, right? If she came out on five, and was like a three, five, like sure it, uh, and still did her healing thing, then you've got a more competitive edge. But like she doesn't trade into anything by the time she comes out, she's weak, 
and she's takedown fodder. So, like, I, I mean, there's not a ton going for her, and Krennic just does it better. Like, a lot of the decisions I made on this tier list are, you know, what of this color does it better? Um, and I think that's uh, pretty apparent, because they're all flip-flopped, as I'm looking at this. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, pretty much. At, at the bottom of triple F minus, I got IG-88. Because that dude sucks. Straight up. Uh, no one really wants to play him except for Flock. Uh, I'm, still, I'm still gonna keep trying him. No one thinks he's good except for Flock. Like, there's no villain aggro package. Like, yeah. you look at Hero and it's like, Four Claws, Red 3, A-Wings, K2SO, like, all these really good red cards for Sabine, for Leia. And then it's like... GI and IG just don't IG. have anything. Well, G but, I mean, like GI does. He like he has his yeah. His GI, GI has with him, but like his what? fifth brother and he has seven sister and he has all you know. I mean, but IG just has nothing, and especially if you play him and you can't get his ability to to, to activate. That's like the hardest thing about him is just getting his ability to be useful. Yeah, but like drops. you have to think that ahead. You you you, you yeah and you you either get it off like plan. once and that's probably about it. Yeah. No, but you you you. That's the thing. Like his his ability not only. Like, going back to what I was saying about Krennic, his ability not only is a an action to do this, I mean, you are attacking with a unit, sure, but, like, you have to you have to change your lines of play so much to get that ability to work and to be advantageous, right? And it's a plus one. Who cares? Right? Krennic has that built in if you're damaged. Well, right? I mean, I, plus, it's if you could do, like, if a leader ability was plus one damage to the base, like, if it was Sabine but just to the other, like, that'd be really good. Like, I think the plus one is relevant. I don't necessarily think, like, IG's abilities are that bad. It's more so he's an aggro leader that dies instantly. Like, Sabine comes out around earlier, and, yeah, she's a 2-5, but I almost wish he was a 2-5 to avoid takedown and, like, some of these other, like, smaller removals. Like, he'll still die to some of these. Like, he'll still die to force choke and things like that. And but fire. Sabine dies to that as well. Um, but, yeah, he yeah, doesn't he, feel like, impactful. I would say if he goes to five and he's a two five and everybody yeah. else gets raid yeah. one, it's very similar to effect to like Sabine. And but now he's a leader who like stays on the board. Yeah, right. But he's so easily avoidable, mm -hmm. right? Like his leader side or his unit side doesn't feel impactful. Uh, and especially you know if if you know you're playing against IG, which you probably aren't, but if you if you know you're playing against IG, right? You grip something to deal with IG. It's that simple, right? Um, he I mean, just feels it does like that's, every, that's any leader, yeah. but but it's so much easier to do against IG. Is my point? Um, I feel like that's because his package is so terrible. Like Sabine, I'm like, and Leia. Yeah, I want to grip something to kill them, but I also want to kill the A wings, and I also want to kill like some other stuff where like IG. It's literally like a stormtrooper. He's got one health. Another stormtrooper. He's got one health. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, everything that he pl he's playing to flood the board to turn his ability on has one health, two health, maybe three. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean... Here's yeah. the... But, here's your but, but he... curve. Uh, yeah, Fog, we can skip the units because I'm sure you might have some stuff. But uh, Death Star Stormtrooper, Ozzel, First Legion Snowtrooper, Fifth Brother, Imperial Interceptor, Seventh Sister, Ruthless Raider, Palpatine, and then you have the Vader's lightsaber and fallen lightsaber and then force choke. And that's, that's red villain. So you obviously can bring in the neutral stuff, which I think are pretty, uh, neutral villain stuff. <laughs> the neutral aggression stuff like exists in there. Like I think things like, I mean, not braggart, not Jetta agitator, not but like Wamba. two tubes and artisan and like wolf, uh, fang fighter, star wing scout. Like I do think there's some like decent stuff in there. But he also, like, doesn't have the reach at the end of the game, like, for a cause and, like, K2SO. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Yep. Yeah. One of the issues you have with him is uh, when he's deployed, unlike Sabine, he buffs all the other units. So, like, if you just take him out, you can remove a bunch of damage, potentially. So, it just makes him more of a target. Yeah, he's yeah. easily so. he's easy to navigate. Yeah. Because, yeah, when you, when, you, when you deploy Sabine, you have a whole lot of other things you're worried about that you want to possibly get rid of, where when IG-80 comes out, if you knock IG-80 out, you remove a bunch of damage on the board. Yeah. I mean, right. arguably so, that she's not even the biggest threat half the time, right? Yes, like yeah, two exactly. There's like 2 and a K2SO out. It's like, yep. uh, I think I got to kill, like, yeah. 
an A wing uh, and a K two SO before I kill. Agreed. I don't. I, I've never. Se- I've never been more afraid to see three A wings on the board at the same time. <laughs> My God. Yo, whenever you watched that video, it saw that he had both in his hand, and then your first card you looked at was an A wing on the top. I'm like, yo, these could get three. <laughs> I was like, you be kidding me? That's yeah. how you play Sabine. Is you just draw A wings. <laughs> Easy game. Yeah, Brian, uh Brian, you, you should have had that um that villain uh air unit. Like, come on, dude. That space unit. Like, what are you doing? Hard Morgan for that. You know I'm gonna, gonna get three A wings turn one. Are you talking about the interceptor? No, not the tight ty- not the interceptor. You want the what the Star Viper? Is that what you wanted? Yeah, Jack no. mentioned you should have Mulligan. It was yellow or... green. I oh, didn't yeah, have the... yeah, no, I, you I want, you wanted the seventh fleet, fleet defense. Seventh yeah. fleet lieutenant. Yeah, because yeah. you ECL that and you kill one, and then you can kill the other one. Yeah, and I found it on the last turn. So yeah, you also kept your hand that too, didn't you? No, I didn't have it. I didn't see it at the beginning. No, I, I mean like I... you're you didn't take a Mulligan. No, I didn't. Yeah, because I thought my opening was fine. I know. I learned. Uh, all right. That's how we learn. Tyler, are you ready for the grand moment that everybody's been waiting for? There's a lot of stuff to talk about here. I'm I so excited. For I this. can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna just off first off the bat. Okay, I'm gonna first go off ahead. the bat. We're swapped. Yeah, you can post it. All right. So first, first thing off the bat, um, I clicked the link. There was not. There's no Cassian, and there was no, um, what you call it, uh, Chariot. So they're not on here. Um, so. But I think Cassie and Chirrut both go to B for me, personally, just to put it out there. But I have Boba Fett, S-Tier. Uh, I think S-Tier should be for the best deck. And I try to keep, when I do tier list, I try to keep, like, the minimum uh, on S-Tier because I feel like that's supposed to be like, the best one you have. And I feel like Boba beats everything else. Um, so then for A, I have Luke, Vader, Sabine, and Leia. I think those are... The very good decks that we have going on right now, the most consistent decks against everything else that I've seen. Um, if you have anything in the A tier right there, I think very good chance of having a good game. And I just think Boba outbeats every single one of them. Um, and it's nice because you have the what, the two aggressive, uh, you know, smack your face decks up there. Uh, but I feel like Boba can easily counter those and stop them and slow them down to do what Boba wants to do. Um, and I think Luke and Vader are going to be early on the better decks because I think they're going to design it because like that's people want to play Luke and Vader iconic cards. I feel like coming in, you know with the rest of the set and coming sets in the future, I feel like Luke and Vader are going to be probably eight tier almost the entire time because they're going to just be iconic, get people to play the game. So um, they're going to be up there, and I still like them because they're very consistent, very straightforward. If you have a game plan with them. You can pretty much carry forward and know how it's going to play. Uh, I haven't. I, I I still don't even know which Luke I've really played. Um, oh, also you doing this tier list. Yeah. Also, and I played green yesterday too. Um, also, uh, tier list. I don't left or right doesn't really mean anything. I wasn't. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> like you guys were saying, I was you're just about to an ask a, me, where would you put Cassie a and, and Chirrut in there. Uh, to me, it's just I, I just kind of threw them up there. I wasn't thinking like left to right's the best one in that tier too. So, but you said B tier for them, right? Yeah, I say they're both B tier. Um, so I personally, if I were going to A, I'd probably put uh, I probably do Sabine, Vader, Luke, Leia. If I were to do like in the order for A tier, personally, I don't know if it makes sense to you guys. Vader and then Luke and then Leia. I like Vader better than Luke. You're crazy. Well, I, I mean, that, I, I could see arguments to that, but Leia, to me, she seems like she's just literally like a step behind Boba. Do you think so? I've I, only played her like twice, and I only played against her like once. So. Do you, uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to ask that question. Go ahead. No, ask it. No, you're good. No, nah, I'm wondering what that question was, dude. Go ahead, little guy. But, but like, what about Leia? I don't even know how to ask the question. What about Leia do you find less appealing than... Is it just because you think that Vader and Luke are iconic and they've designed them that way? Or do you think... Like, I just feel what... like I, I just feel like if I were to make a deck Boba Luke, I think I might be able to slow down Leia is what I'm saying. Okay. 
like with a sideboard, if I were to worry about uh, a, the aggression of those two decks, I feel like Luke Invader could slow them down. Although I think Sabine's a little bit easier to push forward with her ability naturally doing damage to the base. I think Luke so can stop aggro in red, especially. But I don't know if Vader has to have Vader, a terrible win rate versus aggression. Vader gets burned so fast against aggro because he's so like you're trying. I feel like Vader, you're trying to damage control until the late game, in which then you dominate. Yeah. You turn the tables very quickly. Yeah. Vader comes out. You have unit Vader. You have Palpatine. Uh, you know, you have a bunch of different things you can do. Uh, and Leia and Sabine, I mean, their whole thing is that if you get to turn three, I'm sorry, turn like four or five, maybe, yeah. and you haven't won, then that's like... No, I can see that, yeah. Yeah, I, I get actually, yeah, now I'm thinking about it. I can see them just, before yeah. you get to do anything with Vader, you play three units, but they've already played seven. Because even though so, Luke's like a similar, yeah. like, mid-range, late-game type of deck, it... The Shields allows you to trade very well, yeah. Uh, yeah, Shields, but... Especially restore, like having Yoda and yeah, and, and all restore, them come yep. down and heal. Yeah. Uh, whereas Vader, once that damage is on the base, I don't really think he has yeah. a way to. That's fair. Vader, you're mostly trading units uh, as much as pop. Like you're trying to save as much damage as you can because there isn't a ton of option for restore. Uh, yeah. I think the only thing you can put in there that restores is like Del Mico in blue. Well, no, you're the... no. I mean, you could run the Consortium Viper. Oh yeah, but don't I mean, don't you need you need, but you need to have you need to have initiative though, and if they're playing aggro, you uh, going into turn two, right? If they drop an A wing, just take initiative, and then you ECL and kill their. A I mean, well, I guess maybe not that early, right? You want to get damage on the board, but like turn three, going into turn three, just make sure you took initiative, and then ECL that into there. Bada yeah. boom, bada bing. But but the point still stands that there are a lot less options for Vader oh, yeah. to stabilize than three cards out of fifty, the, basically. Yeah, <laughs> to heal. Yeah, okay. um, I can make, I can see that tougher. argument. Yeah, I can see that argument. I mean, he's he's so. killing stuff more. Like, I wouldn't just look at it as like he's worse because he has less restore. Like, there's still gum, still good removal. Options. No, yeah, like the interceptor and force choke. Like, he's got yeah. some good options into it, but yeah, I mean, Luke comes out a round earlier, so even if it is like back or forth to that point he comes out round five where vader's round six unless you ramp yeah i agree uh, i'm not trying to say that restores the only reason why that's not a factor yeah. i'm just saying that's one of the reasons yeah, yeah. um yep. but i think that that's tough it's a it's an uphill climb yeah i think as far as that goes yep i agree um so yeah the next tier is b tier um and that includes the two new ones that i talked about cassian and um great uh so i also have han on that list i have krennic chewy and uh grand inquisitor um i basically have these decks because i feel like those decks are not as consistent as the ones above they're very uh especially with a con i feel like you kind of need the right curve of cards especially playing the last time i played them probably played them crappily crappily but uh i feel like you still need to really know what you're going to play, have a good plan, and to use this ability effectively, you need to have a good curve with cards, and you don't always get that, and basically, if you get a bad curve, you're kind of over. Where if you like the ones above, you kind of can be more consistent with a full-out flesh deck. Um, Frenic, uh, I, I, I'm still iffy on Krennic, <laughs> maybe because just Brian plays him in our group, but, uh, no offense, Brian, but... No, I know, I, I, yeah, that's what I said like, earlier. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, it's just like, I, I want to like them because I like the ability a lot. Uh, I like restoring. I, I feel like I like to play control, restore, but I'm just bad at it because it requires thinking. But, like, I can see it being really good. But I still feel like you need, like, the good card draw and certain moves going forward with Krennic to really optimize his ability. And it requires uh, really knowing what your opponent's going to do. Because you don't really want to, you know, keep damage on units that are just going to die and not get the effective of his ability. Um, uh, go ahead. Yeah. No. Say no. Oh, I, I'm just I, my. I don't mean to keep interrupting you. I'm. I'm just. My question is Aiden. that, like. <laughs> 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 well, no. I mean, how much of this are you basing on our play experience versus like community yeah. materials or like I I I because again going back to my point that I made when I was talking about my tier list is that the Krennic that I played was the worst 
yeah version of that leader right so i honestly haven't seen i also haven't seen a much other chronic i haven't seen the other colors really so so if you're basing it just off of me i mean i can understand why chronic is in yeah. b tier because i played a bad combination poorly right just going for childson man oh, i mean childson's a good play yeah. right but the the whole basis of the color like the mono chronic just ain't it mm-hmm. right i think that green chronic does have more like I watched uh, Garbage Wars. I think it was today or, or yesterday. It had a, a Green Krennic, and 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 uh, they were just rocking and rolling. I mean, he he ramped up and he sealed some some super lasers and and played some resupplies and you know was able to do a bunch of cool stuff. I mean, he's got legs. He's got cool. His his ability is is great. Plus the restore too is uh, a a real, a real boon for him. Um, yeah, I, I I do like his health coming out. I think that's what's really good for him is even though there's a lot of damage, definitely has the good health to keep a leader alive. Because that's one of the things. Like you, the, the the biggest feel bad in the entire game is literally sitting there and you're like, oh, I'm going to deploy my leader. They have five resources, four resources. They're literally waiting for me to deploy and they're just going to kill it. And you go, yeah. okay, I'll deploy my leader. And they go, yeah, I'm going to do the thing. Or And you're just like, big face palm. It's like you... You can't really avoid it. You got to deploy your leader. You know they're going for it. So it's a big face palm when it comes to like a lot of the characters. So it's nice to have Krennic with all that health. Same thing with Vader and Luke. Like they have higher health. It's they're more fun to play. I feel like just because of you don't have to worry about them literally getting destroyed when they as soon as they come out. So but Krennic having that plus with all of his restore um, is definitely very very good. And it probably will definitely get a lot better as more cards come out and more sets come out. The ability to you know, do more damage with being damaged or getting more health and all that stuff. But and then I have Chewy, Chewy and Grand Inquisitor next. Chewy, uh, I like him as well. Uh, what is he? A two seven coming out with the with grit, right? Um, two nine, nine. Two yeah. nine. Oh dang, two nine even even stronger. Uh, <laughs> Bro doesn't even know the card he's ranking. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew it was two something because it's two something. Uh, I feel like he's gonna be a a sleeper. I feel like there's gonna be something that's gonna be very good with him. I don't know what it is because obviously it's not out yet, but I don't know. I feel like he could be very good with a good curve of constantly getting your Sentinels out there, making them attack the Sentinels, getting Chewy out there, maybe beef him up a little bit, but then just doing a lot of damage where you're like, I don't want to attack him because he's literally going to get stronger. So I like I like him for a good B tier right now. And Grand Inquisitor, uh, same thing. Um, I feel like he is only going to get better. Uh, I can't put him too high up because I feel like it's only like what one deck we've been talking about that like he's really good in, and uh, I don't know. Definitely on the other side, and then what Ch- I put Churret and Cassian. I like Cassian as overall good, but I feel like the limited cards we have right now, that card draw is not as important because our fifty cards are only so many card pools once we have a large card card pool and you pay that dollar for a card you want or a much stronger card so there's more cards it's gonna be more flesh deck that you're paying that one to get the card to get basically a card that you want that's definitely more valuable right now i feel like you could just pay one and get like something you really don't need um so he's still good because you definitely can get the cards you want especially the way jack's been playing them i kind of like the way jack plays cassian right now using it a limited amount of times for the certain times you want it. Um, and actually, it makes it late game really good when you have an extra resource. You're like, all right, well, let me just get an extra card draw. Uh, I mean, like late game, grip. so fully... Like What's cards up? In my... I, said, I have, like, a grip of cards. Like, you Yeah, know. you had so many cards in your hand. It was, like, crazy. Because yeah. it's, like, there's so many times where you're, like, oh, I'm floating a... Re-. Like, even going back at some of my games, like, I have a lot of card times where I'm floating a resource. Like, oh, it'd be nice to just tap one to draw. So other other decks are, like, tap, pay one to... Or, yeah, tap, pay one to do whatever. So, I mean, think about how many times you get off with Vader. If you make a deck based off of that, you might be able to uh, do a lot of stuff with Cassian, you know? Because basically, there's a lot of times when you're playing Vader, you're just playing, well, okay, here's my curve. Uh, I'm always playing one below curve so I can get his ability off. Well, what if there's, like, a deck coming soon? Cassian's, like, literally, you play one below curve, but you're literally just drawing every single time. And then come turn five, you have a bunch of cards in your hand, so... Um, I mean, plus you don't have to pay for that after he comes out. Yeah, exactly. So, until yeah, until yep. he flips back over. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so just, stuff like that. He, like I don't think it's strong enough. Like Luke's, you probably want to play under curve almost every time. It like if it's yes. a solid option. Whereas 
Shield's like so Cassian, good. Cassian, I don't like. Like I said, I maybe do it twice before he comes yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Right now, you don't want to do it all the time, but I can see a time where there's a deck with a whole bunch of cards where you're literally playing below curve the Cassian because that card draw is going to be fantastic. And then Chert. Uh, what like, you don't think so? Yeah, because then like, <clears throat> even though you'll have better cards to draw, like, right? Say the best two drop right now is the the two three three. What's he called again? The Battlefield Marine. It's like, sure, he's yeah. the best one now, and sure, there might be, like, a better one that comes out, and it's like, oh, now I can draw into a 2-4-3 for my round one, and I can play that. But it's like, every other deck is also getting, like, better cards as yeah. well to, like, have that. I mean, I think he, like, yeah, I mean, obviously, more options for bigger in the card pool is always going to be good, mm -hmm. but, I mean, like, the thing is, every like, everybody else will also benefit yeah. from that as well and they won't have the card yeah. draw necessarily consistently as cassian but i think he's it's a trap to like do that every round because then you're not okay. gonna be able to play with all the cards that you have anyways. yeah even with that said uh when you have a deck where you're literally have you want to put 60 cards in there you're like well i gotta cut 10 it's like okay well now every single time you pay that one you know you're gonna get a card you probably want so i bet you now if you look at your casting deck there's like a few cards and you're like i wouldn't want to pay one to draw that you know <laughs> so uh, and then, uh, Chirrut, uh, I, I feel like Chirrut, sometimes when I think about it, falls in the same place as Aiden sometimes, where you want to, like, beef them up to keep them alive, but sometimes you're playing against decks that don't care about that, and just want to go right through them, you know what I mean? So, well, in the late night game, when I played against Chirrut, I literally was just like, yeah, beef them up, I was like, I don't care, I think I was playing Lay at the time, it's like, I don't really care, I'm just gonna keep attacking your base like if you want to keep him alive fine i'll just keep attacking your base so but definitely is better than Aiden because at least you have a chance of keeping him alive <laughs> or Aiden sometimes she can just be gone and it's useless because well, he's out a turn earlier now. too and that's yeah, a force and trait yep. and rebel trait yep like, he's really good force is sense. force is so good rebel is really good um so that's why he's definitely in b i just feel like i feel like sometimes you want to like beef him up where it could be like a negative where like i didn't i want to put like a trench on her like oh keep her alive keep it attacking to keep healing but at some point it's like you're not really you're healing too but they're doing like seven or eight you know yeah i mean i think it's a trap to try to like and like the same issue with chewy is like yeah you try to ultron him like too much i think Chur, you're really just like if i can play like a jedi lightsaber on him perfect if i can get like and it binds all things off and heal three and deal three perfect but yeah, I mean, generally, yeah. I think all-in strategies can be a little, like, boring. Yeah. Yep. And then going down the C, I have Hera and Tarkin. Um, just because Hera, I feel like it's kind of not a meme deck, but, like, it's, like, just a fun Spectre deck. Hey, you want to play Spectre, you want to play Spectre, do it. Um, right now, I don't see it really having legs, especially when, like, her non-flip ability is, like, useless. Like, there's no in-game effect. The only useful thing is you could play... Uh, different colors and stuff like Before that. Before the game, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, it doesn't feel, it feels like you're not really playing with a, a leader. You know what I mean? It feels like you're just playing with another character. Well, I mean, it's it's on your deck building, too. Yeah. I mean, that's... There's definitely not I, enough I, cards out for that, too, as well, so... I mean, we have 100 and... Yeah. Well, think about it. There's probably going to be, there's gonna be more Spectres in the neck. There's got to be a few Spectre cards. We already got really confirmation that. from Tyler that a Red Ezra is coming at some point. Who knows yeah, if that's a leader or unit mm -hmm. or whatever. So, like, yeah. But that'll be interesting if when they add more more Spectre stuff. Yeah. Yeah. She, it's just, yeah. Uh, if she hits curve, obviously it's going to be, like, pretty good. And then, like, ECL with Zeb is really good. But it's, like, even some of the options she has, like, other leaders can, like, benefit from them, like, more a little bit type thing. Is just, like, yeah. since she's so vanilla as an actual leader in game and since her ability is, like, a pregame thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just makes her a little yeah. weird. And then even just, like, flipping at 4-6 and giving an experience token is, like, so slow and not threatening at all. Mm. Yeah. She is worse Tarkin. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would I would, I would, yeah. I would definitely, yeah, I would definitely have her worse than, like I said, when I made this, it wasn't, like, a left or right best. Just tier list? Yeah, it's, it's not how it is. Apologies. New to this. <laughs> uh, but then I have Tarkin next. Uh, Tarkin, we always say, like, oh, Tarkin's aggro, blah, blah, blah. But, like, do you really want to be sl paying one slowing down to give you a one, a plus one, plus one? 
yeah, sometimes it's good, but like at the same time, it's just like sometimes the plus one plus one might not be as good as the uh, initiative. It's so like a lot of times when I was playing Tarkin, there was a lot of times I'm like, I'm not even spent. I'm not going to pay the one to, you know, get the plus one plus one. I'd rather just take initiative and go forward with that. So that's why I feel like he's dropping down in C just because, uh, as it comes to aggression, like he's definitely not. He's definitely probably one of the worst aggression ones on here besides IG88, because um, he's too slow. I feel like you want to be a little bit faster. So that's where I have him on the C. And then D uh, is my F. There's four of them because I think they're all just bad right now. And that's Aiden, IG88, and Tarkin and Jin. Uh, I just feel like the way everything's going right now. Thrawn. Not Tarkin. Thrawn. Did I say Tarkin? Oh, yeah, sorry. Thrawn. Yeah. Thrawn. <laughs> uh, they're the same. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, no, so, yeah, I did. We've talked about it before. It's just, it stinks coming out with her so late with the shield. Yeah, great. But there's things, there's ways to get around it. Um, and not that good. And the only way to really get her usefulness is to keep her alive, to heal. And it's just like, it's so easy to get rid of it, possibly, if, or it seems like. So, too late. By the time you get her out, it's like you're already almost dead. So, it's not you're not going to heal enough. You don't have a board state. I feel like on an item deck, in the future, is going to be basically every single card. Because I already kind of started messing with it, trying to make a deck where, like, every single card is literally, like, a bounce back to your hand or deal damage. So, it's literally going to be, every single card is going to do damage. It's going to be a, a very controlled deck where... Every unit you play is going to have some sort of like deal damage or mm -hmm. exhaust or waylay back kind of to your hand kind of thing. Then I think she'll be great because it's literally, literally you get her ability off. It doesn't cost anything, just an action. And when you're usually control, you don't really care about having the initiative when you're control anyway, for the most part. So you'll be able to get a lot of healing off that way. Um, but there's not enough cards out there yet. Because so I think I tried doing one. And there was only like a handful of units that really did like helped get her ability off there wasn't there wasn't much other than that other than like well you haven't played her just since, like power of the dark side and like some of these better yeah came out so uh, yeah i started messing with a little bit with some of that stuff um but it still doesn't seem like it's fun and good yeah. and i won't build my deck and waste time on that yet and i will say Maybe though I will. some uh i do i actually do think control decks care about initiative early on especially like if you early let, on yeah if you let like because well, 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 just well, attack, well, yeah, because, like, well, early on, you don't really have much damage to your base. So, like, yeah, early on, you want an issue. But I feel like later on, it's like you take that extra healing for that for that action. Yeah, I'm, I'm even talking, like, up through her deployment. Like, up through round five. Like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I feel like it's maybe, like, once or twice. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, next, I have IG-88. Uh, this is no particular order, by the way, again. Um... He just, <laughs> he just, he just feels, he just feels like I want to like him, but like every single time I play him, I never get his ability off, or I get it off once, and it's just like I got one extra damage, one extra damage, like doesn't really feel worth. Um, it is nice that it's helps your your action doesn't really slow you down, so you use the action to attack. So that. In, in retrospect, that's not that bad, but, like, when you sit down, you're like, oh, I'm playing against IG-88. Okay, I should make sure I have equal equal or greater than units as they do, so try to, like, match them, you know? Okay, I'm playing IG-88. They're probably going to want to play two one-drops. I might want to play two one-drops, you know, mulligan for my hand. playing IG-88, they're probably going to scoop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or stuff like that. Uh, just, they, it's easy to play around, and then, like, okay, yep, yeah, I just got to look for a four-damage... Uh, event in my hand and as soon as they drop them i'll just kill ig88 you know I mean? so it's like very very feels bad um when it comes to that so i don't know how i feel about him still i still feel like i want him to be better but the writing's on the wall uh Red next i need help yeah next i have not tarkin it's uh thrawn um thrawn i like the idea of his ability i think it's great Definitely would be better when there's more cards, but at the same time, I feel like if I'm playing against Thrawn, I really don't care if he knows half my deck. And even if he knows half my hand, or not my half my deck, half my hand, even if I know he's half my hand, how does he know that I didn't put that in my discard, or in my resource? So it's like, do you really know if that card is actually in their hand they're going to play it? So that you could easily play, you know, oh, the, you can, because you know as soon as the next card you draw, oh, they saw this card, because the first one you draw, you know they know what it is. You could try to put that, like, in your 
uh, as your resource. So it's like there's easy ways to kind of like play around that ability. Um, not play around the ability, but play around the ability of them knowing what's in your hand. And a lot of times, a lot of these decks don't really care. Like, especially Sabine, Leia, Boba, I don't really care what's in your hand. Like, you're gonna, how are you going to stop me, you know? And then Jin, I feel like it's just annoying to try to play the uh, her ability because, like, it's all about aggression, but all the other decks are just... You have to, like, really know how to trade well with Jin. If you're not trading well with her, it's just... Everything else just beats it. Yeah, an issue with her is, like, eventually you want to do damage to the base. So Yes, like, exactly. Yep. Then her ability does nothing. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll just go ahead and say you're on drugs. Uh, Chewbacca that high, dude. I don't know what you're doing. A lot of this is just uh, questionable. Well, I mean, I think Flock explaining, like, S tier should be one deck if that's how he wants to interpret it. But then you're saying D tier should be one deck as well, yeah. But I just feel like those well, no, are all... D, no, D can... I don't know. It, no. It's, I'm just saying that, that IG... And also IG the fact is just that so far below the rest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hard, no, yeah. My it, bad. It's hard yeah. to interpret what exactly you mean by all of this because they're like... just thrown there. You know what I mean? <laughs> this yeah, is the yeah. perfect... Like, this is... Brian has said that we are the Always Sunny crew uh, with my wife included and Flock's girlfriend included. And what? I'm Dennis, Brian, you're... Mac. Mac. Flock is Charlie. Flock's Charlie. My, my wife is Frank. <laughs> and then uh, Flock's girlfriend is uh, is D. And I feel like this is like the perfect example where it's like you're looking at Charlie's like paintings or like writing. This is the this is the map. <laughs> this is the map to Frank's will and, and the and the vents of Patty's pub right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How do you read this? Uh, but I mean, yeah, I mean you're not like like I do think IG88 should be in a tier by himself because he's bad, not because there only needs to be one in his. He like he could definitely shoot up if Red Villain gets a card pool that's relevant. Because like, yeah, I mean, it just all his cards kind of suck. Like it's yep. going wide doesn't feel like super rewarded right now outside of his ability, which you know is fine. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, the most of it, I think the rest of us are pretty much on on the same page biggest difference was yeah probably like both brian and i had chronic a tier you have chronic b tier you've got Chewie yeah. and b we had them on c yeah um d tier i i i just like again i even if you wanted to put iron throne and gin in, in d tier and ig and f i mean that's yeah add another tier. yeah yeah if, if i were to add another tier i'd probably yeah. put yeah ig f and then the other one 3d but it's i mean it's it's not It's fine. We all have Boba number one. Yeah, yeah I mean that's consistent. Yeah. Um, I think that is definitive across like the the community as far as you're, as far as you're seeing. Everyone thinks that Boba is just, mm -hmm. and he's been proven to be like just yep. the strong. best, right? Um, yeah. Interesting. And Jin is really big difference. We had her in B tier. You got her in D. Yeah, yeah I just spaghetti policy. Not a fan of Jin. I just don't think the ability is that good. Time will tell. Yep. When I when I opened this, I was like, I first of all, IG's above two people, <laughs> and Jin's the bottom of the barrel. I was like, oh my god, brother, yeah, this yeah, is a tier bad, list of all time. You'll have to uh, <laughs> you'll have to correct it and send it the correct one <laughs> to me. Yeah. Okay. Post these. Yeah. Okay. I'll do it now because I'm leaving. To I'm leave going it. to bed soon and leaving for vacation. So. Where? All right. I mean. That covers all our tier list. I mean, and then some. And then some. Yeah, I mean, general consensus, right? Uh, Boba's really good in like two to three different colors. Hero aggro is pretty good. Luke gives you some options. Vader green's good. Krennic controls pretty good. And then you know, like the B tier going across. Like all of us pretty much had like Han in there, Churd in there, Cassian in there. Uh, you know. All of us had Grand Inquisitor in there. I thought I was going to be the only crazy one having him that high up, but uh... I I think that the main takeaway for me from this tier list uh, across all of us, right? I think there's a lot of uh, versatility in this game, and I've been saying that since the beginning. But there's a lot of these decks that like you can bring these to your local and not feel bad about doing so, right? There are some decks in One Piece that you're crazy for bringing them. I mean, yeah, we might get there. You know, like for I bet first set one piece you could probably show up with anybody type thing. 
whereas there's five sets for one piece so when there's five sets for swu i bet that'll <laughs> probably ring oh yeah no I'm, I'm sure but like but i think even in set one there is a couple that you're like you, you might get a couple looks for, for slapping that down on the table i mean I, uh, look at you if you bring ig88 dude i'm judging you but that's one and it's not even silent i do i'm judging uh garbage rollers today yesterday their article inception was like five hot takes um and he said, and I agree with this, that each leader will win a store showdown of at least like 20 people, right? Because each leader's probably, you know, there's Alaskan four-person regional type things. IG, um, baby. I think he, Let's I, go. Like a, I'm like doing a 15, That'll be me. 20, That'll be me. No, definitely not. I, I will drive up to... Uh, Flock, you didn't play your two. Nowhere, nowhere Albany, and I there, will win one there. There will be, there will be a two-person event. And one person will be playing I'll IG, and it's you, and you'll still be third. I'll sleep in. I'll sleep with a uh, at Alan's house on his couch, and then we're going to an event, and then yeah, we'll, I'll win one there with IG. You should start winning games with good decks, and then and then we could talk about you winning. You should learn the cards that have been spoiled in August. <laughs> it's too, e and then it's we'll too easy to win with good decks. I'd rather win with bad decks. You ha you don't win with good decks. What are you talking about? You don't win. Y'all just jealous. Flock, dude, Brian and I were so worried at the beginning of this game that Flock was going to be a menace to us, but he was really just playing Boba when no other cards were spoiled. and just. There's no us. dice. If there's dice involved, I will win. You do win the roll-off and go first every single time. <laughs> every cool. time. This week, it was it was any time that he rolled something and I rolled something, his was always one more at least. Yeah, I think the first game, it was Jack rolled a five, and I would like go, six. all right, it's yep. six. <laughs> yep. It's maddening. I'm so excited for you to be unleashed onto the world. Cannot wait. I'm excited. Um, all right. Any other thoughts, comments, questions, concerns, dreams, hopes? I I like I like how this all lined up. I'm pretty excited to see how this all shakes out when the game comes out. And we're not that far away now. So. Is it, was it 40-something days of March 1st? Is it like 42, 43? Something like that, yeah. Can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah, dude, I... 37 days March 1st. 37. Sub 40. Sub 40. It's looking healthy. Um, it's, it's looking healthy across the board, though. I mean, I, I, so I really... It's 44 to March 8th. It's 43. Yeah. Still good. Still get, Still touch cards by then, so... Yeah. I'm hoping uh, that we, like, get enough... Like, I don't know. That we can make enough, like, from the pre-releases that we're going to. And I know we'll probably... Currently, we're at three, so we're at 18 packs. So not quite a box, but... You're getting there. We'll see what we do that week. But, uh, yeah, anyways. All right. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. Appreciate you watching. Be sure to follow, subscribe, whatever it might be, on YouTube, on Facebook, on uh, Twitter as well. Um, yeah, and that's all we got. And we will catch you all next time.